Nigeria's GDP grew by 3.11% in the first quarter of the year 2022. But already we can see there are headwinds to Nigeria's uh, GDP growth going forward. For example, the Monetary Policy Committee of this, under the auspices of the CBN, Central Bank of Nigeria, met and again increased the monetary policy rate, which is the benchmark rates for banks, to by 1% uh, to 14%. It looks like we're going to be on an upward trajectory as far as interest rates are concerned. And when interest rates grow, that means that growth may slow down. Some may say that some of these uh, economic theories don't work in Nigeria, but there are reasons that can be explained why sometimes they miss the point. For example, the increases in monetary policy rates that have come in recent MTC meetings have not led to the commensurate reduction in inflation rate as projected. How far much more will inflation go before it recedes, given that inflation is now a serious phenomenon globally, even in some of the most developed economies? Which way Nigeria and which way for our growth? Even we should be projecting into the next year, 2023. What's going to happen to the economy? And as these things happen, when growth slows, close, slows down, that means that companies are not doing as well, they are not employing, they are even some of them are sacking and throwing people into the unemployment world. And we can ill afford this because we operate a very brittle economy uh, with a very wide income gap and a lot of people, about 70 million plus, in abject poverty. What is, what are governments supposed to do? What kind of advices can we give? people in government, you know, around subjects of inflation and what we have. And also we have this huge problem with fuel subsidies, which has become an albatross around the neck of the Nigerian economy. Uh, the recent MTEF, medium term uh, expenditure framework, seemed to project about 6.7 trillion. This is a humongous amount of money that's larger than even the uh, expected revenue of government. How can we cope with this? And is there any government that can come and summarily withdraw the entire subsidy, if it was true, okay? Withdraw the entire subsidy and face up to the kind of inflationary backlash, which can take us into a triple digit inflation, just because they want to make a point. These and many more subjects and issues we're going to be discussing today and we have with us Professor Amin Usman of the Kaduna State University. And also, uh, he is also a member of the Board of Economists of the Daily Trust. Uh, welcome, Prof. Yes, thank you, Mr. Tope. Thank Dr. you Tope, sorry. And You heard um, uh, some of the things I just spoke about now. Which yeah. way Nigeria? What's going on with our economy, Prof? A lot. Hmm. A lot in the negative sense also. Hmm. Um, just some, something just not to be working. And, and I think... Uh, probably government, time has come on government need to actually sit down and begin to do serious discussion about the economy. Um, we have led the economy on so, some kind of auto, auto piloting or, or people just, the CBN is going one way, the Ministry of Finance is going one way, the budget office is talking something else. Everybody is something to be on his own. So there's no concerted effort at synergizing the, the actions and, and, and activities of each of these key agencies managing the economy. I think the way for Nigeria is for actually government to call attention to a deliberate discussion on the state of the Nigerian economy. I think right now everybody is talking about the politics, but the issue is that there probably will be no economy to run after 2023 elections, wow. the way we are going. Because if we are now saying that by end of 2023, we're probably going to use about 6.7 trillion to pay subsidy alone. Then, then, well, and that money, the government doesn't have that money at all. And right now, it's chucked off with debt service. The debt is already overbearing on the economy. When, when, when even they, they said, okay, about um, the, the debt service has surpassed actual government revenue, yes. which means we are not going to be borrowing to do virtually everything. Hmm. Apart, we also borrow to pay to service yes. borrowings. We borrow to pay salaries. We borrow to run the government. So when will the borrowing end? I think time has come when we need to really, really 
talk about this economy. Yes, some, some apologists or some people will just say, look, this is a common thing. Every country in the world is facing it. Like you just said, um, inflation is running here in virtually every country. But then those companies, those countries we are looking at, they are production-based companies. I mean countries. countries we yeah. are consumer-based countries. In fact, foreign import consumption country. Oh. So our own case is most beer. That's why our inflation I mean, the, some of the policies coming up from the MPC is not actually working. If we look at what happens, the last increase they did, th there was no impact on the economy. Yeah. Simply because the inflation is not really um, demand, even though there's some element of demand in it mm -hmm. because of the foreign yeah. content, mm -hmm. but essentially it's, uh, I think, cost Customers. and then supply mm. short mm. bottlenecks mm. that cause it. So what policies are we going to put in place immediately to address these issues? Yes, um, because we are so tied, or we are so used to consuming foreign, uh, everything foreign, yeah. then, so it means whatever inflation they are having there will also import it into Nigeria. And that's why you can see for, for some time now, uh, the pressure on the, on the exchange rate is, is, is becoming very, very scary for everybody. I mean, I, I want to take a, a historical view of this. I'm, I'm thinking, where did this thing start? Like, you know, some people will say in local balance, where did the rain start to beat us? You know, because I know that um, under this present administration, you know, the numbers are not looking good at all. At all. Naira starting from 199 officially now to, to 440, 40, okay? Yeah. And on the street, 600 and... God, I'm 50, yeah. In yeah. fact, no, 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 no figure exactly. Yeah, and the other time I calculated inflation on food and some other things, you know, from 2015 to date, I was getting 250%, 300%. Certainly. For example, rise from 8,000 to 30 something thousand. How do you, where, where did we go wrong, Prof? I think ab initio, I, I won't say ab initio, this government did not start properly. I mean, a government met an economy that was also always almost drifting to recession. Yes. Then it now takes about six months even for a government. Yes. So already you have, you have a terminally ill person, and then you, you, you are going, you are, you are reading books trying to find out what to do with it mm. without taking any palliatives mm. to stabilize it. That was what thrust us first into recession. It's not because we, we, it was inevitable for us to go into, no, it's because the government could, the new administration could not come up until six months later. Yes. Now, when you bring in ministers six months later, they need about three months to acculturize, yeah. to familiarize, before they can even come up with policies that could be discussed. So then we went into recession. We were able to pull wow. ourselves through. Then, as we, are, as we are stabilizing, and then we didn't see, I mean, the, the promise Mr. President made to us that he was going to have a crack team that will actually just stopped, run the economy on a top speed, then we ended up seeing people who cannot, who don't even know they're left from their right. So that's how we've been trudging. Now, before you we realize it, it's already time for election. When we are at the election, no government is only politics. So things were stumbling, stumbling. And when they first came, they said, they said there was no issue of um, subsidy, they are going to deal with the subsidy issue. We thought they have removed the subsidy in 2016 when they increased the, the, the price from 87 to 145. Simply, uh, like you said somewhere, um, 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 as they are deregulating the market, they also devalue the currency from yeah. maybe about 100, average 200 naira yeah. officially to about 300 and, and 600 yeah. and something. Mm. So automatically, the, 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 the subsidy issue comes in a big way. Come back, comes back in a, came back in a, in, in a very big way. So from there, it becomes non-stop. Mm. And then we have not been able to actually walk through the fiscal operations and then yes. the, the, the monetary operations mm. to be able to tame inflation. Exactly. But then we allow central bank to be an all commerce. I mean, everything, everything, yeah, yeah, yeah. everything, everything jack do the fiscal, trade. jack of all <laughs> trade. Now, actually leaving the main function. This is very important. Which is, which is very important. And, uh, I mean, uh, why, I mean, like you rightly said, the central mm. bank ends up running monetary policy and of course yes. monetary policy there are only a few bullets you have you manipulate interest rate maybe you want to take position on foreign exchange uh, here yeah, and there you yeah, yeah. don't want to be seen but then of course where there's a lacuna the center bank ends up running fiscal policy 
by intervening in manufacturing, in intervening agriculture, in agriculture, in aviation, in aviation and then in in independent of all those yeah. ministers and agencies. Mm, exactly. So why why as the fiscal authorities themselves, being Ministry of Finance, yeah. not been able to stand up to their own? Okay, for example, the fiscal authorities will tell you that look. Nigeria doesn't have a debt problem. We should borrow more money. More but what we have is uh, we have a revenue problem. Okay, so generate the revenue. Because <laughs> revenue generation is right on their alley. It is their responsibility. What happened? Yeah. Well, well, we don't know. Because they're so focused as the only way out. This country is in a mess. These things are not just working. So we, can, we have to keep borrowing. Yes. Then when we keep borrowing, then we'll be able to restructure the economy. We'll be able to bring in infrastructure that will bring in money. But inside itself cannot bring money. And, 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 and we kept shouting that, now. look, you cannot... And we're getting to the point where people will not even lend us money anymore. No, no, of course. We, we've been shouting that, look, you cannot upgrade the infrastructure in this country, the magnitude of mm. investment required, through borrowing. Mm. It's unsustainable. Yeah. Why can't you actually look down and sit down and see the ICERC Act mm. and see how you can revive it? How can you make it in, 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 in investors? How can you raise investment confidence and make it friendly to investors so that you can actually attract... Pants that you do this without borrowing. Because borrowing, has, and we have reached that stage now where we use all our revenue to service debt and still have to borrow again to, to, to continue to service. So, so, what I'm saying is that I think we are bad, is bad managing the economy. Yeah. Then we are so unfortunate with two things. One, the COVID 19 that slows down to the entire world. Yeah. Now, up to now, companies have not been actually true. Most major international corporations yeah. have not been able to, to, to recover fully. Second, um, um, then, then we now come and pass this Ukraine Russia war and all. It is in attendant, um, immediate challenges to every other economies because we are dependent on these so called um, big countries. So, and they are all going through problems. That's exactly. why even the CBN, by CBN saying, okay, they are going to raise. Jack interest rate by mm. probably one percent. What they are saying, what they are trying to say is that they want to attract um, exactly. foreign portfolio and, investment and, and to come back. And come back. But they are already having problems in their country, so they won't be able to to to. And to apart from that, why to, why would we be targeting foreign portfolio? Foreign portfolio that investment. is what they call hot money. Because, yeah, it's hot money because you know, when they move in and they move out, they move out. They can't they, stop they, them. They, they can't stop them. So so I I think instead of internet focusing on those things that will actually bring back. Production, like we were actually said sometime, that um, you need to create new class of spenders. And then some people are not just even thinking, how do we create jobs? How do you put people back on, on track? How do we actually eliminate tremendous waste in this country? I, I, I kept asking myself, so we don't have full, fully manufacturing, full capacity in manufacturing vehicles, but at least we have fairly few number of I mean, assembly plants. Yes. Why can't we insist that government officials could only use made in Nigeria cars? Why do we have to buy cars? Why, if you look at the budget, take any ministry, any MDS um, agency's budget, you see the quantum of amount of money we're buying. We are now buying probably, every, every ministry will buy 20, 30 uh, Hilux trucks for about 30, 40 million naira. Why do we have to do that? Now, there are so much waste that are not being actually addressed. And then we are just looking for money wherever we can borrow. To, and then until we get a situation whereby we're a high-risk country now that nobody will want to lend to us. You know, I mean, it's very, very painful because um, when some of us talk about some of these things, it seems like one is uh, being ideological and so on. It's only, for me, I think it's common sense. It, it's, when we had a bit of money, why were we buying all these funny things, especially with public money? And another thing is that... Um, some of the highest corporate governance standards are now being set all over the world in the public sector. Look at the UK. You, you, know, you can see that in the UK, in the financial market, some of the boys, they can lose billions of pounds. That's their money. But you can't spend under pounds of, of taxpayers' money anyhow. Anyhow. They come after you. Yeah, come so how come our people did not see them? Maybe is that something that gets into people when they get into government? Well, I don't know. I, I, I think it's just because of the high level of indiscipline and then, then the lack of yeah. consequences. People don't, don't pay for their actions. People are not held yeah. accountable. Uh, well, somebody, some people say we are fighting corruption when you have some isolated cases of people that fell out of favor, then they were exposed. But most of the things go unnoticed and even, even where it is noticed, it's, it's, it's ignored. If, I mean, since the advent of this government, probably there was only one time 
there was a, a mini cabinet reshuffle was made. Yeah. Only one or two well, ministers <laughs> lost their jobs. In eight years. In, 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 in eight years. It's, it's never done. And even for the sake of rejuvenating the government, you reshuffle these people. Yeah, yeah. And then the, I, thought, I thought when you are given a position of a minister or a strategic MDA chief executive, you have a service contract hmm. that every six months you give an account of what you did and how far. In terms of policy, not in terms of anything, in terms that, of policy implementation. Prof, I think that's a very, very important uh, thing you just mentioned. Issue of service contracts, benchmarking, benchmarking. performance management, oh, yes. targets and co. Uh, but, you know, hold the thoughts there. Um, we're going to go on a short break right now. We've been talking to Professor uh, Amin Usman of uh, KASU, that's uh, Cardinal State University. Stay tuned, please. Welcome back to your show, The Nationalist, and we've been talking to Professor Amin Usman um, on the show today, and we've been discussing some very critical, very, very critical aspects of our Nigerian economy uh, with him. You know, before we went on that break, you were talking about, you know, the need to be scientific in terms of appointments and the running of the economy okay. in terms of performance management and all of that, you know. I mean, can you expand a bit more on that concept? You know, no, what I'm saying is that, look, you're going to come in as a minister. Hmm. And you, you, first of all, I think your CV should be able to tell you that, to tell the government that, okay, this is yeah. suitable for this position. Hmm. Then when, when he, and, 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 and you should be put to task, okay, give us your blueprint and see what you can be able to achieve in the first six months, in the first yeah, one year. That's good, yeah. Now we have something to tie you down with. Hmm. And how does, what does your ideas tally with overall government policy? And that's why you find that there's, I mean, I, I, I overheard, I, I don't know how true it is, that there's some, some kind of tussle between the Office of the Chief of Staff and the Office of the Secretary of the Government as to who controls the policy coordination unit of the government. Mm. So everyone is... Is, 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 is at loggerheads. At loggerheads <laughs> with each other. Now, that is the office that will not be able to do the assessment or they will be able to align each MDA's blueprint mm. with the overall policy of the government and then the assessment will be based on those areas that this is where the government is going based on the policy and this is what you have been doing so that some that people can be able to sit up but where you can hear all kinds of scandals going on and nobody lost his job i mean a case in point is okay we have security challenges everybody knows we have serious security challenges yes. but to the extent that some people on a motorbike some people say 200 some people say 300 came into the vicinity of the federal capital committed a serious security breach, and three, four weeks later, nobody paid, and nobody, no, nobody is held responsible, nobody, nobody lost his job, nobody even res reprimanded, apart from just some, 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 some comments that doesn't, add, that, that, that doesn't want anybody. So that is what I'm trying to say, that because people, there are no consequences for failure, yeah. there's no consequences for misdemeanor, consequence there's no co co consequences for inability to keep in fact, if you look at the way some of these MDAs are, are being run, it's like, it's just anything that goes. Wow. It's just to punch a budget and spend money. Wonderful. Nobody cares, cares, okay, this money we are spending, what impact is it having in the area we are supposed to be, to be impacting? In fact, uh, Prof, I was uh, invited to a meeting the, earlier this week, and uh, the gentlemen, they did a work on um, fiscal responsibility. Responsibility. I think also under the fiscal... Responsibility Commission, and I could see that most, um, perhaps only one agency, have submitted their final audited account as at uh, for 2021. The rest, some are owing that report since 2012. Some, most of them, since 2018, they've never bothered to submit. to submit. So, like you said, the whole idea is they make the money, they spend the money, and the agencies that the government has to start forcing. Because when they make money on behalf of the Nigerian people, they spend 99.9% .9 of it on themselves. You know. Yes. Now, you know, without delving into specifics of politics, you know, 2023 elections around the corner, by whether we like it or not, and by God's grace, you know, 2023, May 29, we should have another government, another civilian government to give it a try. On the economic front, you know, if you were part of that government, what, what should they do beyond um, you, you know, giving us a very nice suggestion 
regarding you know benchmarking uh, performance management um, you know you know even ministers should draw up a vision very very important you know to draw up a vision to say this is what I think we can do and we have to kind of make the running of government more scientific and based on results and empiricism that's fantastic but what else especially on the economy front yeah, should we be doing well I think the first thing that Nigeria should demand that every presidential candidate must come out with clear-cut policy option hmm. on the key challenges of this country hmm. and 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 most of it should center around the economy because once you get the economy right yes then that's every likelihood you can get the politics right hmm. exactly because exactly. look an average Nigerian or an average student anywhere if the economy is working fine, there's food on the table, there's jobs to do. It doesn't care who is the president. Yeah. It doesn't care who is the yeah. Senate president or whatever. The problem now why everybody is focusing on the politics is because of the hardships. Now, if anybody wants to be the president, we must be able to, to, to interrogate him, we must be able to interrogate his policies to know whether actually he has answers to some of the questions. Hmm. But if you allow, if we continue, to also elect people on the assumption or, or, or on, on, on the generics. We are going to fight corruption. Uh, we are going yes. to consolidate on what the government has been doing. I mean, what is has the government been doing that you, are going to, you want to consolidate? <laughs> you want to consolidate spiraling inflation? You want to consolidate an unstable foreign exchange? You want to consolidate, consolidate um, I mean, serious uh, security breaches? Mm. What is your policy with regards to exchange rate, with regards to managing inflation, with regard to uh, creating jobs, with regard to manufacturing, yeah. with regard to actually developmental issues. We are a develop, developing economy, so we want to see what you can do in practical terms, in terms of bringing up development. Because without actually creating jobs, you cannot be able to also even address the security issues we are talking about. But then there are two aspects of security. We think that, okay, by economic hardship, you push people into... Um, criminal activities. But the kind of criminal activities we are facing now mm. is more fundamental beyond just not having jobs. Yeah. It's being combating criminality to a thriving business. Mm. Exactly. We are now at a state of combating criminality to a thriving business. So you have to see, you have to fight it direct. Why? Why, why should we allow I mean, criminals to actually invade, create mm. havoc, and then we start running health care, start trying to, mm. to catch them. Mm. I mean, the last time when they, when, they, when they attacked the train, Mr. President said he has given specific instructions. Those um, people should be brought home, hell and fight. Yeah. And, 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 and we know, off, off the cuff, we know that people are paying 100 million yeah. for their for That's business. business. So, so how do you stop somebody who is earning 100 million for doing criminality how do you stop oh, how do you stop him yeah. it's not, and you know that he was not driven by economic hardship yeah. he's not driven by economic so the method the mindset of the government and whoever is coming to take over the government must be that of clear cut policies strategies task and whatever to actually address that issue because you have to eliminate the criminality first Absolutely. before you, yes yeah. one, all at the same time you are reducing the chances of um, slipping into criminality by creating jobs and i think in this country it's relatively easy to create jobs this government has tried mm. by saying everybody should go back to agriculture mm. do you understand it's a good thing that's why now if you go to the market rice has become more the, the most stable food in this country mm. Um, it's not because of government policy. It's because of the ease of farming rice relative to grains. Okay. Those are other, other grains, maybe corn, so go on to that. Mm. Rice is much easier because it consumes a lot of, I mean, less and less fertilizer. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's why the, the, the production is, is higher. And we have a lot of um, to marshy lands and why, why we can actually plant it. Once there's enough water, it, it, it requires little, um, little fertilizer. Yes. And, and when you know how to plant it very well, it requires a lot of little labor mm. of, of hoeing and things like that. It's just maybe picking uh, this thing. And once you apply the chemicals, you have less, less of weed around. So mm. weeding is, is, is little ah. less, less tedious. That is why. It's not because government has actually boosted, do something, you know. People out of hardship went to, went, went to farm. But then the insecurity has prevented 
us from feeding ourselves. Mm. So government is, is not really realizing that, look, we can produce, one or two states can produce all we need in this country, as far as rice is concerned. All the others, we can sell it off in the international market. But simply because of lack of security, we can't go, we can't approach the farms. Mm. We can't be able, if you, if you have the money, you have the interest going to go into farming, you can't go. Mm. Because you can't go five kilometers away from the town. Exactly. So, so what, what are you going to, why do you have the large farms mm. that is acquired out, out within the city, within, within the vicinity of the... I have, the uh, thank you, Prof. I have two uh, very brief questions for you as we round up in the next uh, couple of minutes. Yeah. The first one is, um, what, what, do we, what do we do about this fuel subsidy issue from your um, perspective? I think government should have, um, recently, maybe a few days ago, they just did some little adjustment to show what we've been expecting that there can't be one single price of PMS in exactly. this country. Exactly, yeah. Because you can't, fuel is uploaded in Lagos. Mm. And then you sell 165 in Lagos and sell 165 in Meduguri, mm. about 1,500 kilometers or mm. 2,000 kilometers away. It's practically not possible. So, bury the price. That's one way. Two is, in this country, I don't know if, the south, but in this part of the country, we have, we have almost become accustomed to buying fuel at 220 mm. on the average. So they should have adjusted the price to 220. There wouldn't be much price because people have already started adjusting. Because yeah. we, can't, we can't survive this subsidy removal. Yeah. Now, even if government is recovering, if you move from 165 to 220, you're actually recovering about, how much? About uh, 55 naira. Yes. About 55 yeah. naira from what you are losing. That's a significant amount if you have to, to imagine recover, yes. how many millions we are, we are consuming every mm. day. So at least from there, you continue to gradual pacing out. Even if it is 10 naira, 5 naira you are adding, that people are not feeling the impact as much as possible. Yes, we know it's an election year approaching, and we know the government is thinking about re-election. Yeah. But then what are you going to let, let people to do when you, can, you live in an economy that they cannot manage? <laughs> when you leave an economy to a new government that they cannot pay salaries. Exactly. The last question, Prof, mm. um, you very briefly, under 30 seconds. So, mm. uh, is the academia pulling its weight, actually maybe in the field of economics, in the governance of this country? And you are in academics as mm. well. Are you guys pulling your weight enough? Or are you just uh, watching the thing drift, reminding the fact it's going well, to affect all except, of us? except we have an opportunity to speak out like I, I have not this mm. opportunity. I don't think the academia, the academia can do anything. Because even the scholarship has been eroded. Now, academics have been at home for five months without salaries. How, do you, how can somebody even think mm. when he cannot even feed his family, when he cannot even send his school, children to school? And... Uh, so, so there's no, we, we normally make contributions through conferences, workshops, yeah. seminars. Those ones are no longer possible. Thank you so much, Prof. Thank you, Thank you for coming, and uh, I must assure you, I'll see drag you down here several times. <laughs> thank you. Looking at different issues. Yes. yes so, yes. thank you very much for staying tuned so far. We've been talking to Professor Aminu Usman uh, of Kasu. Um, it's been a great discussion. Join us next week.